Shalom Chavrim, and it's very pleasurable to be with you guys again, and we hope that you're enjoys, enjoying the news broadcast. Uh, I got a lot to learn about doing news broadcasts, though. Uh, uh, trying to get in the hang of it there, and we're hoping uh, to get Israel live up and running to where the program actually runs live. Uh, I think I'm going to incorporate my son Ethan as my engineer. Uh, he'll probably be the youngest engineer ever in the uh, news broadcasting industry. And uh, my wife said she would help me as well. But he is so excited about uh, doing filmmaking and things of that nature. I figured it would be a blessing for him and a, and a chance for him to learn uh, more about it. So uh, that way we can get the the visuals up as we're talking about the news broadcast, especially in the background. It's hard to make the picture big while I'm talking and things like that. Uh, anyway, uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to you about Romans again. Uh, you know, the other day I started the video and, I, and we were we, the intention was was to go through chapter 9, 10, and 11 all simultaneously. And for some reason, something happened, and I could not do chapter 10. I just felt in my heart something wasn't right about it. And so I stopped the video, and I never put the part of chapter 10 that I had done on the video. I just only did chapter 9. And uh, so everybody's probably wondering what happened to chapter 10 and chapter 11. Brother Steve, you said he was going to do Romans, a teaching on Romans 11. And uh, actually, we're going to do just chapter 10 tonight. And... Uh, uh, there's a good reason, and now I know why, because the Lord revealed something to me in Romans here that I had never seen before. Uh, it is incredible, very much incredible to say the very least. It's, it's going to shock a lot of people when you hear these things. Uh, so I'm going to save chapter 11. I don't want to get into chapter 11 either. Uh, and I'm going to prayerfully look at chapter 11 again. Uh, Brother Jason has always asked me about going into this, and so uh, I've read it many, many times. I've always been passionate about Romans 11, and uh, it refutes replacement theology, and I think you're going to find out chapter 10 does the same thing. Let's take a look at chapter 10 then. If you have your Bible with me, we'll go to Romans chapter 10. Uh, we will also briefly look at Daniel uh, chapter 9. We will also look at Joel chapter 2. Uh, some other places we're going to take a look at. Uh, so right into the scripture here, it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Now, it's important that we look very carefully at the very beginning of this chapter as it goes into the things that Paul's going to speak about because the whole chapter is dealing with the salvation of Israel. And so therefore, the theme is going to carry all the way through, even through chapter 11, it's going to carry right on through as the salvation of the Jews. So, verse 2 then, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. Now, Yeshua is that righteousness. We know that, okay? So they've not submitted themselves unto him. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe, believeth. See, he's that righteousness. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now, here we can plainly see, when it speaks about the righteousness, they've not received that righteousness as of yet, okay? Well, it's easy, without even having to turn there, but you could. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that. If you go to Daniel, uh, in the Jewish Bible, it's way in the back. Uh, it's not so in the Christian Bible, it's a little different for you guys. But if you go to Daniel chapter 9, in verse 24, 70 weeks are decreed concerning thy people and concerning thy holy city 
to finish the transgression, okay, and to make an end of sins and to atone for iniquity. See, this is all to Israel. Has Israel's sins ever come to an end as of yet? No. Has, has, any, has any, there been any atonement for iniquity? Well, there's been an atonement, but unfortunately they've not received that atonement as of yet. See, but Daniel's told, 70 weeks are decreed concerning thy people and concerning thy holy city to finish the transgression. The transgression was against Yeshua. That's where the transgression began. We transgressed against him. And so that's got to be finished. See, so it's got to come to an end. And to make an end of sin. Sin, excuse me. And to atone for iniquity. And to bring in everlasting righteousness. Bring in everlasting righteousness. Christ has got to be brought in. And they've got to recognize who he is, his righteousness. Now let's just see then what Paul then says about that righteousness and how do, how do we attain to that if we've been trying to attain to the righteousness of the law by obeying the law, keeping mitzvot, as we say in the, uh, in, amongst the Jewish people, we say keeping mitzvot. All right. Well, how do we then we keep mitzvot then? If we're going to really keep mitzvot, we must attain to that righteousness of Christ. We must believe on him. So, all right then, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And see, that seems so simple. And a lot of times, I remember many times going back, looking in this scripture here and, and thinking, you know, you just ask someone, do you believe that Jesus Christ raised from the dead? Do you, you believe that? Will you confess that with your mouth? All right, you're saved. You know, that's simple when it comes to a Gentile believer. But you know, this applies to the Jewish people. Now, it's not to say that, I mean, salvation for both Jew and Gentile is exactly the same. But the point is, here, Paul, in the simplicity of what he is saying, shows how simple it is for the Jews because they don't believe. They don't believe that he, that he died or that he rose, rose again. You know, they believe that all this was fake. So for them to fulfill this scripture right here, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Absolutely, for them, for them to confess with their mouth that the Lord Jesus sh and shall believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead? Oh my gosh. You know, but yet that's how simple it is even for the Gentile people. But for the Jewish people, you're actually making an act of faith to say that. It's simple, but it's a huge step for the Jewish people. Now, Notice, though, the theme is right to the Jews. Or he's really pressing this on for them. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay? For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Hmm. Keep that really close in mind. These next few verses are so critical. I don't want you to miss it. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Now, when he's talking about there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, he's talking about that plan of salvation. It's not to say that there's not Jews or, Gre or, or Greeks or, or Gentiles, in other words. Yes, there's Jews and Gentiles. Certainly there are, as far as flesh. But when it comes to that salvation... It's the same for both of us. If we believe upon him from our heart, with everything that's in us, then we shall be saved. And for the Jews, it's so hard for them to do it. But if they just confess it with their mouth and believe from their heart, salvation is right there. Now, verse 13 
is the critical verse, though. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, who's, who is he talking about the entire time up until verse 13? All right, let's look back. Verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between Jew or Greek, for the same Lord over uh, all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Should I read that to you guys in Hebrew? Let's just take a look at that. Now, Paul is quoting, um, if you look over in your margin there, from um, verse 13 there, that's from Joel. Now, in English, it's 2.32. All right? But in the Hebrew Bible, for my Jewish brethren that are, that are reading along, He's actually quoting from chapter 3, verse 5. That's for us, that's where it continues at. Didn't leave anything out, it's just it's in a different chapter for us. Um, all right then. And of course, it reads the same in our Bible. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered or saved. All right. So let's just take. So let's read this here from the Hebrew scriptures here. Vehayakol ashaikara besham Yahweh. Now, that's a kicker. What does it say here? Vehaya. And it will be kol asha, all which ikara call. So you're a cry out. Besham in the name Yahweh. So we're talking about salvation, and that if verse 9, but if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And then Paul comes down here to verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Name of the, so is this Jesus, Yeshua? Is he the Lord? Yahweh? Well, let's see what else it says. How then, verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? You, see, you understand what I'm saying here? See, the thing is, the Jewish people, there was not a question whether or not they believed that Hashem was actually God. They believed that. But Paul is, if you really see what I'm saying here, Paul realizes that Yeshua, or, or, or Hashem himself, God Almighty, the yod He vav He, written in the Hebrew language, the divine name of God, was manifested in human flesh. That's what Paul is showing you right here. When he takes you, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 13, he quotes from uh, Joel 2.38 uh, 2, 2, well, in the English Bible. Let me just say it that way to make it easier. And for the Jews, chapter 3, verse 5. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now he's giving you the scripture that applies to Yeshua, that applies to Jesus. But in this case here, the name of the Lord is Hashem. For whosoever shall call upon the name. See, the thing is, when you read this in Hebrew, in other words, if we were to call on yod heh vav -Hey, we should be saved. But the problem is, we never believed that he was that he was God manifested in flesh. 
And that's where the sin came in. Verse 14 clearly shows us, How then shall they call on, call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? Now a lot of times people would take the verse here and we apply it to the Gentiles, you know, the gospel going to the Gentile people, but he's, he's still talking about Israel. How are they going to, how, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now, it does have a compound fulfillment. Yes, the gospel does go to the Gentile people, and, and they do hear. And it, and it is taken with a preacher. But notice what he says in verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Who's bringing the glad tidings of good things to Israel? The two witnesses are. How beautiful are the feet of them You get into verse 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their, their, their sound went into all the earth, and their words into the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know first Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by by a fool, excuse me, by a foolish nation, I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that ask not after me. See? Now notice, see what he's doing there now? Now he's clearly showing the gospel goes to the Gentiles. But up here in verse 15, he's still trying to show you that he's going to deal with Israel. He's going to take and they're going to recognize the righteousness. They're going to be saved and he's going to send preachers unto them. Verse 21, But to Israel, he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands into a disobedient and gainsaying people. Now, I'd like to share with you one other thought here, though, that's very fascinating. Okay, yes, here we go here. The one thing I wanted to share with you as well, in closing here, and that is the scripture that Paul quotes from in, in um, Joel 2.38, or 2, yeah, 2.30, 2, what is it, chapter 2.32, I think I was saying 2.38 a moment ago, I'm getting that mixed up because I'm not looking in, a, in the uh, King James, I'm actually looking over in the Hebrew, I'm just trying to remember which verse it is for, for there, but I think that's 2.32 is what it is, not 2.38, my apology for that. But uh, anyway, what I wanted to bring to your attention though, if Paul quotes in verse 13 of Romans chapter 10, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, if you notice right above chapter, uh, excuse me, verse 32, uh, verse 5 for the Jewish brothers that are reading from the Tanakh, let's back up just a little bit. Now we do know that uh, from verse 1 in chapter 3 of the Jewish Bible, I guess that's verse 28 in the Christian, it says, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days I will pour out my spirit and I will exhibit wonders in heavens and the earth and blood and fire. Pillars of smoke. The sun shall be dark. It shall turn into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, or Hashem, or Yahweh, shall be delivered. 
He's given us a time frame, just like Daniel does. Daniel lets us know all these things are finished up for Israel in the 70th week. The signing of the covenant with Israel. And although it outwardly appears to be signed with the Palestinians, secretly it's signed between the Vatican and Israel. When that covenant is signed, your 70th week begins. We have blood moons coming up in Israel here, and even the sun will be darkened when we have an eclipse. I forget exactly when that happens in this solar cycle over the next two years here, 2014 and 2015. But nonetheless, all these prophetic things, even the dreams and the vision and the Spirit of God being poured out upon all flesh, all kinds of people are prophesying. All kinds of people are having dreams. I've seen unbelievers having dreams that just shock shock you beyond belief of things that are happening. And this is the time that Israel is to call upon the name of Hashem. This is the time that what? They will recognize that Yeshua is God manifested in a human body. God bless you. If you want to be a part of the ministry that we're trying to reach out to our Jewish brothers and sisters, we would be honored to have you as a part of what we're doing. There's so many of you that have been reaching out to help us in this endeavor. Uh, we will soon depart for Israel. We're only weeks away now. It's no longer even a month now. It's closer to the end of this month here around the 28th is when we depart and we don't know for sure exactly what all will happen we know we will be bringing you news broadcasts from Israel that's why we started Israel live uh, we still got to get it moved over to the live 365 format which is where we're at under Israel live as well so if you want to join in with us there you can that will be live and running very soon um, but we still have a lot of preparation work to do, a tremendous amount of work that it will take to, to bring these broadcasts to you live from Israel for you to be able to see news that, for the most part, you're not able to get. What little bit that they do allow of Israel, we're hoping to be able to step that up and show you things that are going on behind the scenes as well as we want to take you to the different places on site to see through the biblical prophecies of, of, of times past and share with you the insights that God reveals in my heart. I'm starting now, I'm, I'm kind of gearing back away from work a little bit in order to be able to lay out a plan uh, as we go through the different events while we're there and to just really just lay out a feast for you that, uh, that we trust that will just bless your heart from every angle possible. Um, and you're the ones that make that possible for us. In fact, my wife even said to me the other day, I would have never dreamed we'd be going to Israel right now. But we realize that there's a reason behind it, and you guys are the ones that have made that possible. We want to thank you, all that you do, every single penny that comes in. We thank you for what you're doing, because you're making that possible. You're making that a reality. And we're trusting that a revival will break out in Israel. Don't know how, don't know where, don't know when, but we believe that this may be that hour. And we thank God that you decided to be a part of that with us. Anyway, thank you for giving. Those that would like to know how, you can go to our website, israelreturns.com. There's a place you can donate there, or if you prefer to do by mail, uh, you'll see at the end of the broadcast here our address there will pop up on the screen there. Um, anytime though, I would say um, if you're doing by mail, just try to come before, well, even if it got here after, say the 24th, that'd probably be a good cutoff time frame there. That would still be okay. We have a uh, family here that will still check our mail for us and take care of that. Uh, but what we will do is when we get to Israel, we will update you with a new address. Uh, so if you choose to, do, uh, to send by mail, you'll be able to send it to Israel directly. That is safe to do. 
and uh, in an international stamp, it's not that expensive. I think it's a dollar twenty-five or something like that. I'll send it anywhere in the world. But we'll update you once we get there. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you, and pray for us. If there's more thing, more than anything else that matters to us, is your prayers. We really need them. We love you, and God bless you.